Whenever you're setting up a motion control system within Dragonframe's Arc Motion Control workspace, you're going to need to connect to some kind of device. So you'll notice that the top of this bar, it says, you know, use the scene connections dialog to connect to a motion control device. So that's just letting you know that you're not connected to anything at this point. So if I go up to scene and to connections, we get this connections dialog and if there's nothing here already, you could hit the add connection and that'll create a new bar. This already knows that I've set up to a DMC plus and that it is registered into the Arc Moco one slot and that this is the device. All I have to do here is hit connect. Now, if I didn't see my device here, which is set up through USB, I'd look for it in the pull down. So I'm gonna hit connect. Oh, these icons over here, by the way, show me that the DMC plus has motion control it has DMX lighting. It also has triggers and connections you can use. So it's a pretty cool device. All right, say okay to that. Now that bar is gone. Now we know we're, we're connected and it's registered to our motion control one. We already have a motion control crane hooked up and you can see that we have swing, boom, pan, tilt, roll, and focus set up already with their settings and they're all registered to separate channels within the device. So this A1 means arc motion control one because you can have multiple devices you're connected to and then you see channel two, channel three, channel four, etc. You can do 16 channels out of the DMC plus and out of the DMC 16. You notice that there's no channel one, that's because we're gonna set up channel one for track. So I have track here on the rig next to me and I've got my settings, I already know work for track and we're gonna plug those into the scene settings. So the first thing we're gonna to do to create a new axis is hit this plus button. And this does two things, it created the axis down here and then it also opened up a configure axis panel. There's a lot of important stuff going on in here. We're connected to Arc Motion Control 1. We're gonna go into channel one now. It did that by default. It probably just looked at the list and saw we didn't have anything in one, so it, it did that. But you'll have to make sure that you select these properly. And the function is normal. Um, the other functions like 3D slider and focus and manual is like there's no control. So manual is actually just for generating numbers. It's kind of cool if you ever need to move something and you just have a ruler or a dial or something and you just need Dragon Frame to tell you where to move it to. That's what manual is for. Focus does some very particular things. If you say this is a focus axis, then that means it's going to bring up the focus magnification tool. 3D slider, it's going to bring controls for this axis into the 3D controls that are in the cinematography window. But in this case, it's normal, so we're gonna leave it on normal. Now this is really critical here. Some people uh, will start programming and they don't change anything here and they don't give it a unit. It's really important to go in here and really figure out what your units are, not just leave this at one step per unit. It's going to help out all your programming down the road if you just take the time and calibrate. Now, we do have a calibration system that will help you count out steps so you can figure out, okay, I, I went 30 inches, how many steps did that go? And it'll do the division for you so that you can say, okay, well, this is how many steps I have per inch. It's a pretty cool tool. But I already know what my steps per inch are on my track, so I'm just going to go ahead and type it in. It is negative, and I'll explain that in a second why it's negative, but negative 6730.71 is this odd number, but it is accurate per inch. Also, if you're going to do anything that's moving the camera through space, like up and down and left and right and forward and backwards, you want to make sure they're all calibrated in the same system. Don't do some in centimeters. You know, do them all in inches or all in centimeters. Just make sure you keep that consistent, especially if you're going to eventually set it up to do virtual axes. Okay, our max speed is going to be for jogging. So this is the jog max speed. This is just driving around to find your shots. You don't need it to go super fast as you're just driving around to find positions for your keyframes. So it's 10,000. And I'll show you what that looks like. I can use these buttons here to get a feeling for how fast 10,000 is. You know, it's not too fast. It's gonna be a safe speed for me to drive around the set. Acceleration here is set at two seconds, but I think we could take that to one. Let's see what that feels like. So it just gets up to speed a little bit faster. Settle time is not critical for this axis. It doesn't shake the camera around a lot, so I'm not worried about that. Frame to frame speed. So you press shoot, 
takes the picture and then the camera moves to the next position, gets ready for the next frame, how fast does it get to that next position? And we usually set this pretty low at 1 8th. You have a few different speeds here up to real, you know, the one time, and that would be the 10,000. But I usually leave it pretty low just to gently move the camera from frame to frame when you're shooting stop motion. This indexing area over here, this is pretty cool. Indexing is when you wanna have separate exposures and one exposure, you know, you'd have track is in one position and then for another exposure, track goes in a different position. It's pretty rare that you're gonna use this. We've used it for some lighting tricks. It is used in 3D. When you set up a 3D axis, it automatically is a double indexed, meaning for every frame, you're gonna get a left position and a right position. And that happens automatically if you pick 3D slider from the function window. But we don't need to index this axis. Okay max live speed so this if you're going to shoot in in real time you know how fast can the rig go and this one i'm setting this at 50,000 cuz i know that that's about right and i'll set the acceleration to 1 second and i'll show you what that looks like that's going to be pretty fast here makes a makes a good noise too on these stepper motors <laughs> Okay, so that's our max speed there, and you could just keep trying different numbers until you stall your motors or do whatever you think is safe. I happen to know that that's, that's about right. A backlash rollback, that's um, this really cool feature where if you're shooting and you want to delete a frame, Dragon Frame automatically backs the camera up a little bit further than where you were and then rolls forward you know, based on whatever directions all the motors were going in and just does it automatically. You don't need to set this too high on this rig in particular. It's, it's a pretty tight gear mesh. So I'm just gonna set it to 0.15 inches. That's how much it's gonna move when it does backlash rollback. And that's plenty enough for this system. The soft limits, so this is basically software limitations on track. So I don't want the track to hit the end. I, I know how long the track is. You need to click in over here, delete. So it's negative 46 inches. By the way, this is in inches because we set inches over here. And then the other side of this is 0.45. Now with track, and we'll do another tutorial about how to set up virtuals, but track, you always have to set it up so moving forward is going into negative because that's the way the 3D world works for some reason and that makes it mesh with you know files you're getting from Maya and, and things like that. Now, on my particular rig, this is a Volo we're shooting with, we have limit switches set up so that if you pass the software limits and you keep going, we don't want the rig to hit the end and keep like driving into the end for some reason. So what we do is we have mechanical switches that are wired into the DMC Plus the DMC Plus has a 25-pin adapter that goes out and you can take it to a breakout board and send it out to switches, you know, it's pretty versatile. And I have those set up on channel eight on that system. Okay, let me see if I've missed anything else here. Switch eight. We don't need backlash compensation here. One second, okay. So this looks great. The last thing is I wanna name this. I'm gonna name this track, okay. So now we have track. I'm going to move that up to the top. Oh, now look at this. You see the buttons right here? See how they're pointing left and right? But I want track to go forward and backwards. So here's what we'll do. We'll double click on the name. That's what brings up the configure axis. And see right here it says select. Okay, so we can select. And I think this is correct. Let's see. Nope, oh, that's backwards. Okay, I want this one. Okay, so now that, yeah, that's backwards here. Take a look. That's moving away. This is moving forward. So now I say okay to that, and you'll see that in track, the buttons are pointing in the right direction. I really like to have these buttons, um, not just saying plus and minus, but to actually give a visual reference of which way things are gonna go. So that's the basic setup on setting up an axis and using the configure menu. You know, you wanna get in there when you're setting up your rig, maybe you're designing your own rig, and so you have to find what these numbers are and you just play with all the numbers and see how fast the rig should go for jogging, how fast it should go in real time, see what its limits are, you know, bring the numbers back a little bit to keep it safe. And then what you wanna do when you've done all this work is you wanna save this out, okay? So I go to export, I say export axis setup right there. And, you know, we'll call this um, Moco Toot for tutorial. So that saves that axis setup. Basically, if there, when you start into the program, there's nothing here. So you'd go to this menu and you'd say import and you import the axis setup and it comes in and everything should be zeroed and, and ready to go. 
So hopefully that explains the basics of the Axis configure. And good luck with setting up your motion control rig.